Tatramasi. You're it. Ha! <laughs> You're everything that's going on. In other words, you are a particular place at which the whole universe is focused. Now then, what has happened here is that by being aware of being aware, being able to represent what goes on fundamentally in terms of a system of symbols, such as words, such as numbers, you put, as it were, two lives together at once, one representing the other. The symbols representing the reality. The money representing the wealth. And if you don't realize that the symbol is really secondary, it doesn't have the same value. You know, people go to the supermarket and they uh, get a whole cartload of goodies and they drive it through. And then the clerk fixes up the counter and this long tape comes out. And you say, $30, please. And everybody feels depressed. Because they, they give away $30 worth of paper. But they've got a cartload of goodies. And they don't think about that. They think they just lost, lost $30. But you've got the real wealth in the cart. All you parted with was the paper. Because the paper in our system becomes more valuable than the wealth. It represents power, potentiality. Whereas the wealth think, oh, well, that's just necessary. You've got to eat. Well, I mean, that's to be really mixed up. So then, if you awaken from this illusion and you understand that black implies white, self implies other, Life implies death, or shall I say, death implies life. You can feel yourself, not as a stranger in the world, not as something here on probation, not as something that has arrived here by fluke, but you can begin to feel your own existence as absolutely fundamental. what you are basically. Deep, deep down, far, far in, is simply the fabric and structure of existence itself. Because if you play life on the supposition that you're a helpless little puppet that got involved, or if you play it on the supposition that it's a, a frightful, serious risk, and that we really ought to do something about it and uh, so on. It's a drag. There's no point in going on living unless we make the assumption that the situation of life is optimal. That really and truly we are all in a state of total bliss and delight. But we are going to pretend we aren't just for kicks. You play non-bliss in order to be able to experience bliss. And you can go as far out as non-bliss as you want to go. And when you wake up, it'll be great. You know, you can slam yourself on the head with a hammer because it's so nice when you stop. And it makes you realize, you see, how, how great things are when you forget that that's the way it is. And that's just like black and white. You don't know black unless you know white. You don't know white unless you know black. This is simply fundamental. So then, here's the drama. My metaphysics, let me be perfectly frank with you, are that there is 
the central self, you can call it God, you can call it anything you like. And it's all of us. It's playing all the parts of all beings whatsoever, everywhere and anywhere. And it's playing the game of hide and seek with itself. It gets lost, it gets involved in the farthest out adventures, but in the end, it always wakes up and comes back to itself. And when you're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. And uh, since you're all here and engaged in this sort of inquiry and listening to this sort of lecture, I assume that you're all on the process of waking up. Or else you're teasing yourselves with some kind of uh, flirtation with waking up, which you're not serious about. But I assume yeah, maybe you are not serious but sincere, that you are ready to wake up. And you say, who's in charge around here? Well, nobody's in charge. There never was anybody in charge.